My first club was London Scottish when I was about seven or eight years old, um, down in Richmond. Uh, me and my brothers were brought up in London, that southwest area. So those are the first sort of nine years of my life, and then went down to Kent with the family and moved to Cranbrook Rugby Club. Pretty much that was me up until 18. Um, I went after school, I'd had a year out. Um, I had a place at Uni of Gloucestershire, but wanted to do a year out, so I was sort of a sport assistant teacher in New Zealand uh, at Taranga Boys College and then I went and played for a local club called Rangatawa um, where I played, yeah, pretty much played the whole year there before coming back for uni where I was at Uni of Gloucestershire playing for the, just the, the Wednesday side. Um, started off as like the freshers and the third team then second and first team by the end of the year. Ended up in my second year. A bloke called Phil Llewellyn, who was our coach there, took me and another bloke up to Nuneaton RFC, uh, where we played two years there, up in uh, National 3, so we're sort of travelling there Tuesday and Thursday nights, playing places like, I don't remember, it was like Scunthorpe, South Leicester, Hinckley, that area, like the Midlands area, it was in the Midlands League, which was, it was a hell of an experience to be fair, I loved it. Um, and then I managed to do a year for Hartbury RFC in National 1, um, in my last year of uni. And at the same time, I managed to get picked up through the English students pathway and I got picked up uh, by Simon Amor at the Sevens and I got given a six week trial there and ended up yeah, getting contracted there for three years. I think I made my professional debut when I was 24. Um, so a bit of a late bloomer. <laughs> Have a look at this. They're well over time here. And the race is on for the corner! And it is a try to run! Those first few months were a big shock for me and a few of the other guys that joined the programme. Uni environment to professional sevens environment, which I'd, I'd still maintain a, sort of the fittest athletes in the world. And it, it probably didn't take me until the next season to really get up to full fitness. Um, so I, you know, I, I targeted being a 14 minute player. I think I could probably say I was probably about a 10 or 11 minute player. Everyone used to take the mick out of me as I sort of did five to seven minutes on, two or three minutes off, and then I'd come back on for the end. Here is Mitchell now, a couple of gaps on the near side. Can England find them? Rory McConaughey, McConaughey, magic from McConaughey. An incredible three years of my life, and I look back at it with really, really fond memories. And obviously being exposed on the World Series was massive, and playing with the guys on your team, like Tom Mitchell's, James Rodwell, Dan Norton, who'd been there from almost, well, the last two had been there from the start of professional sevens, pretty much. And then it took a massive step up with uh, the Team GB programme at the end of that first year and the Olympics was incredible for me. It was one of those unique tournaments that you never think you're going to be involved in and I think growing up being a massive fan of the Olympics and, and all the events and especially sort of like athletics and stuff, you, you always dreamed of being there but you never thought rugby would be in, like, involved in it. So, to have that as the first tournament, uh, first Olympics that it was involved in and to be, to be in that team that went was, was huge and it was just great to be able to put, you know, sevens on the map. Four player coming around the corner was Hayter, another switch, McConaughey will have the legs. What really stood out for me was he was just the most incredible team person. He's a really good guy. He's incredibly ambitious, incredibly driven, but very, very humble. How he put his ego aside and put other people ahead of him, put the programme ahead of him, he would always do what was right for his teammates. Every single time the, the challenge has been set for Rory, he's always stepped up and, and embraced it and, and, and achieved, which is why I'm not surprised that he's doing exactly the same thing in a, in a very short space of time in 15s. He always rises to the challenge. The decision to you know, tell Simon that I, I wanted to make the make the transition into the 15s game and you know give up potential more Olympic hopes and and you know staying with a team that I really got along well with and we were really a nice close unit um, and that was the hardest thing I think leaving the boys that I got along so well with and and starting afresh in this you know I'd never been in a 15s professional environment so it was a big it was a big sort of jump to make but I wouldn't have wanted to finish my career and have any regrets and if I hadn't given this a go then I would have would have regretted it. So I'm glad I made the jump. Um, the first few months were tough in terms of learning all the game and, and suddenly realising how long I'd been out of the 15s game and 
just simple things like timing and the catching that you'd never thought would be an issue um, and then obviously the info and the tactical stuff that goes in with the 15s game is, is, is massive so it was all that learning curve. Everyone needs a chance at the start, everyone needs a shot and sometimes it happens because you're absolutely storming the Premiership Cup or the Premiership Shield. Mine happened because Joe was on England camp, Anthony was coming back from an injury, Alan Brew was injured so it's kind of like you have your shot but you just got to take it when you, when you get it. Rory McConaughey. At last we get the chance to see him. I remember Darren Edwards just pulling me aside and just saying, look, like we've had a few chats from England and they're just asking after you and they just wanted to know a bit more about you. And I was like, oh, okay, that's fair enough. And then I had a random, um, random missed call two weeks later. I think it was the day after our last game against Leicester and it was, it, I didn't know the number. And then I got a WhatsApp from an unknown number saying, it's Eddie here, give me a ring. And I was like, this could be a joke, like, don't, <laughs> just don't trust your player, don't trust your mate. So I think I checked it, um, I think I checked it on Zach Mercer's phone without telling him why. And he, he said it was Eddie's number. So um, yeah, I rang him back and he just basically said, look, they've been impressing me this year and um, camp was coming up in, in five weeks. So rest up and, and see you there, which was, yeah, it was, I went numb for a bit and sort of went into a, a bit of shock, yeah, pretty. Pretty unbelievable and something that I definitely wouldn't have thought of sort of three weeks before that. <laughs> it's still a bit surreal in my head. I think um, it was nowhere near the plan that I had about 12 months ago coming into 15s. Um, so it's it's just it's just incredibly exciting. You know, you're involved with some of the best guys in the country and that is, is incredibly special and something that I'd never ever thought I'd be involved in. So I'm just, you know, making the most but also trying to enjoy every day and this experience might not come again and doesn't come around often for many. So yeah, I'm I'm loving it. Be privileged to be alongside you guys in this room and yeah, thank you for making it happen.